Welcome back. Today we're going to investigate the area of regular polygons. Recall that regular polygons have all congruent sides and all congruent angles. So they're equilateral and equiangular. Some examples of regular polygons, of course, are squares, uh, equilateral triangles. Uh, we'll work quite a bit with regular hexagons, and so forth. We're going to start with some vocabulary. The radius of a regular polygon. The radius of the polygon is the segment joining the center of the, po center of the polygon to any vertex. So if I draw a segment straight to the vertex from the center of the circle, that is going to be a radius. And it is the radius of the circle circumscribed about the polygon. So it's the radius of the circle around the outside of the polygon. It also bisects the angle of the polygon. So for this square, of course, that will split those two angles to 45 degrees each. Next is the apothem. The apothem of a regular polygon is a segment joining the center of the polygon to the midpoint of any side. So I go from the center to the midpoint to the side. We're going to pretend this is tangent down here. So I can go to the right as well. And it's to the midpoint of the side of the square in this case. And we should know then that that's going to form a right angle because any time I draw a tangent, a radius to a tangent point, it forms a right angle. You may also see the two tangent theorem here. But the radius of a circle, it's the radius of a circle inscribed in the polygon. So it's the radius of my circle here. And it is the perpendicular bisector of the side of the polygon. So we can see that it's perpendicular, but it will also bisect the side. So if my square had a side of length 10, it would split that 5 and 5. And our new formula, the area of any regular polygon, whether it's 3-sided, 4-sided, 5-sided, 6-sided, 12-sided, the area of any regular polygon is one half a times p or one half the apothem times the length of the perimeter. So I could use my square here and my apothem here is five. So for my square, one half five times 40. So my area is going to be 5 times 20 or 100 units squared. Now, we already knew that because if the side is 10, we also know that it's 10 by 10 and it would be 100 units squared. But you can see here that it works either way. So just a note that regular polygons include squares and equilateral triangles. So make sure you add this to your list of formulas. So for the area of a square, use 1 half A times P and equilateral triangles, kind of a subcategory of your triangles here. Uh, we can also use 1 half A times P. And of course, remember that the area formula for a square is the same for a square, a rectangle, a kite, and a regular polygon. So you have all sorts of area formulas for a square. Let's take a look at the equilateral triangle. Okay, We know that the area of the equilateral triangle, since it's regular, could be 1 half A times P. We also know the area of the equilateral triangle is one-half base times height, where our base is the, the side that the altitude is drawn to, and our height would be an altitude. 
Okay, so let's say we've got an equilateral triangle with side S. So all of the sides are side, are length S. Well, we know if we have an altitude, one side of our triangle is going to have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And we know that the altitude in this triangle would split this into S over 2 and S over 2. We're going to split this in half. So if we add those together, that would be length side S. And my altitude then is, well, in a 30, 60, 90, my X side is S over 2. So this is S over 2 square root of 3. So that's my altitude. So if I were doing 1 half base, times height, that would be my area of a triangle. So I have that written down here. The area is one half base S times my height S over two square root of three. Well, one half S is the same as S over 2. So I have S over 2 times S over 2 square root of 3. Well, S times S is S squared. 2 times 2 is 4 square root of 3. So the area of an equilateral triangle is side squared over 4 times the square root of 3. So you can add that to your area formulas. The area of an equilateral triangle is side squared over 4 times the square root of 3. It's also 1 half a times p. It's also one half base times height. So you use one of those three formulas. It doesn't matter which, but it might, depending on what information you are given and what's going to be the easiest. I would certainly add that one to your list, though, and commit that one to memory. So something new for you. Let's move on to some sample problems. Let's calculate the area of a regular hexagon with side of length 6. So what do we need? But we need the length of our apothem. We don't know what that is. We want to use area equals 1 half A times P. And we know our perimeter is going to be 36. So our area is going to be 1 half A times P. We have to calculate that. I'll draw in a radius. Now keep in mind my apothem is the perpendicular bisector of the side. Splits that 3 and 3. We get a 30, 60, 90 right triangle here. So A is 3 radical 3. So 1 half 3 radical 3 times 36. I'm going to take half of 36. I'm going to get 18 times 3 square root of 3. And so the area is 54 times the square root of 3 units squared. And finally, calculate the area of an equilateral triangle with side length of 9. I don't even have to figure out base times height. Uh, I can just use my formula. Side squared over 4 times the square root of 3. So I get 81 fourths square root of 3 units squared. And that's the area 
of that equilateral triangle. So you've got a couple new formulas here that you can commit to memory. Add those to your list so you can study those. And we'll work more with these new area formulas when we see you in class.